Hello and welcome back to another episode. Now last episode I said I was going to be removing the second air intake and this is that video, so stay tuned. Now as you can see here, this is from last week, one of the delete video. Now this here is the secondary air intake sort of manifold. It draws vacuum and then it uses the secondary air pump. The secondary air pump has been removed already. I've done that off screen because it's rattling around like an absolute nutter. Um, so this is just basically stopping the exhaust gases from coming out. And now it's a simple little pipe. If that's not there, exhaust comes out of here and I don't think that should be happening. I think there's block, a blockage further down. But we can leave that off. This needs to come out, so that means all of the actual induction system needs to come out so I can access the coolant manifold down the bottom, just down here somewhere. You can just sort of see it behind this pipe. Um, get that out of the way. You will lose some coolant if you do this yourself. So I've actually got a bottle of coolant on standby, so I can top it up. Right, so let's get on with the video. Right, first things first, I'm gonna have to remove the air filter and the actual assembly itself. I'm going to start by removing the actual cone itself. So that's that out of the way. And then just moving the little bracket that I put in myself. That's out of the way. Right, so now that's out of the way, we can actually somewhat see the manifold that we need to remove. It's two 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, I'm gonna quickly show you on the head I have in the garage and what I'm doing and where it's going. Right, so this is the head in the garage. These are the two 10 mil bolts we have to remove on the engine in the car. This is the coolant manifold. It sits here, but it sits over the secondary air intake manifold itself here. So there's two, I think well three, cap head screws to remove and a little sort of gasket. I'm doing this one handed so this is taking a while. Yeah, that's your secondary air intake manifold right there. And this little blanking plug is what we're gonna be doing on the other engine. So we have to remove this one to get to that one. So you can see one M10 bolt there, or 10mm bolt there, and there's one just below. And this is the secondary air intake manifold. It goes beyond these pipes here. So it's gonna be quite tricky to get to, but removing this manifold does help. So let's get on with that. So you might be able to see what I'm doing there, but it's quite hard to tell. It's just loosening off the manifold. there and one that's underneath. As I said you will lose some coolant from doing this. So make sure you have some on standby. So that can come away now. Hopefully we don't lose too much. Oh, looks like we're losing quite a bit. It's been caught underneath the car on a tray. Now we can actually start and bolt in the manifold itself. Just need to remove this pipe as well. I could have probably got away with just removing this pipe other than the manifold, but. So the three lower bolts are out from underneath here. Just need to remove this last one here. I 
like that is the actual secondary air intake manifold off. Don't need that anymore. So yeah, that's where a uh, blanking plug needs to go, or a blanking plate. Before now, this can be very hard to film because there's loads of crap in the way, as you can tell. But I'll get it on and then I'll show you what it looks like. Right, so that is that is it right there. This is to the engine and torque down. As you can see, it looks a lot cleaner up top. That towel was not there anymore. It's now down here, ready for the bin. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It's like I said, it's hard. It's hard to get on camera because it's right in the bowels of the engine. But hopefully, me showing you where it is on the other head in the actual garage itself will give you an indication of where it's meant to go. I just now have to get the O-ring back in the actual O-ring, what's there, back in the actual housing, put the housing back on, refill it with the coolant that I've lost, and hopefully take it for a test drive. Now, as you can see, I've actually had to take the manifold off. Number one, because it's absolutely filthy. Number two, is because it's cracked slightly in here, so that the O-ring's not sitting flush anymore. So I'm gonna have to use some silicon sealant and then hope that the actual O-ring seats again. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it up, dry it off, and attempt to refit it. Oh yeah, so as I was saying, the actual plastic has deteriorated and it's actually gone into the water system itself. Uh, that is not good news, not in any way, shape or form. So this will need to be replaced. Uh, I haven't got a spell at the moment, so I'm gonna have to put it back on, just temporarily until a new one arrives. But like I said, the O-ring is not going to sit in there nicely. So I'm gonna have to use some Loctite sealant and then hopefully it should get the O-ring to stick in. Now, lucky for me, I have a spare engine sitting stripped to bits in the garage. So I do have a second one here. It's not as badly damaged, but it's on the way. That will be a better choice than the one that's come off. So I'm gonna change the actual temperature switches over. Um, the actual gasket itself, or the O-ring, I don't think it's gonna actually sit in there without some persuasion. So if not, I'm gonna to have to cut it and shut it. I'll just cut it with a razor blade, trim off what I don't need and then super glue it, but we'll see. I think it might fit in there, but we'll have to uh, play it by ear with that one. Yeah, this is a new one. Uh, yeah, this is a new one of the stripped engine. I'm gonna save that. That's the old temperature sensor. This is a new one off of the actual car itself. And come out. So now that's stripped down. Got the O-ring, got the temperature sensor. That in there. Make sure it seats properly. Temperature sensor can go in. And then I can replace the actual clip. Clip goes in like that. and that is not going anywhere. Just need to try and locate this O-ring. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's gonna play ball. That does really need replacing, but it's a Sunday and nowhere's open due to the lockdown. So this is going to be a very interesting drive to work Monday. 
We're also young, I have to super glue this, I think. There's not much else I can do with it. So, so yeah, that's where it overlaps. I'm gonna cut it out just a little bit bigger. So that it does seal fairly tight. Well, this is already temporary. I'm not doing this for a long time. I will also silicone that as well to give it a second sort of barrier of protection. I'm gonna pull this apart now. Get the super glue ready. I'm gonna tidy up the edges. Now the edges are as bad as flat as I can get them, I can super glue that together, like that. Now super glue goes with moisture, so I find that sort of going on it a few times and then hold it together while it goes off. And there you go, you've got your new O-ring. Now this is for emergencies only. This is kind of an emergency. If I probably really, really tried, I could probably go and get one today, but it's gonna be an absolute nightmare. So I'm gonna do a little bit of silicone in here. Not a lot, not as much as last time. It's a tiny little bead of it. Like that. Just to hold the O-ring in place. Look for that weak spot somewhere where it's encased. Also, there we go. There's all the silicon, the yellow rings in there still. So, there's like two layers of protection there now for this actual application. It's not saying it's foolproof, it could go tits up, but we'll see. I'm gonna now bolt that to the car straight away so it's glowing off. And then hoses can be then bolted to this. Don't know if you can see, but that's where it bolts to. You can just see out of shot, if I move this pipe out of the way a little bit. That's the second air intake plug itself, or the actual blanking plate. And then this goes on that. Right, so as you can see, that is now back on, that's nice and tight. You can just barely see the silicon on the outside coming out. I'm pretty happy that that is sealed. Uh, I'm gonna give it a little while to go off before I start filling the coolant system up. But in that time, I can reattach the coolant pipes and start in a little tidy up. Right, that is everything plumbed back in and plugged in. You can see the manifold that was replaced right there. And just hidden in here to the right hand side is the secondary air intake flanking plate. That is the N249 and 112 delete in place. It's made the engine bay look a lot tidier. All of this needs to tie up because it's dirty as anything but it makes it look easier on the eye. There's less stuff to go wrong. Right now, all I have to do is to put the actual air induction kit in itself and the mass airflow sensor, plug everything in. I can fill the car back up with coolant and then it should be ready for a test drive.
Right, so this is the car all back together. You can see it's a lot neater than before. Now I just have to take this off and replace the coolant that I've lost. And the car should be ready to drive. Letting the car heat up so the thermostat opens so the coolant system can self bleed itself. I don't advise leaving the cap off for long, or if it's been hot, do not open the cap because you'll get burned by steam. It's the engine in that stone cold right now, so it's literally just going to cycle water until the air's out. Uh, I will keep the coolant bolt on the back just in case an air lock is somewhere and as I'm driving it, it comes loose. Uh, but yeah, just bleeding the coolant system out and it'll be ready for a test ride. Now I'm just waiting for the thermostat to open still. When it does, this should just sort of make like a, a plug noise. So I wouldn't take the plug out like a sink or a glug 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 glug. Feed the system that way and I'll be able to top it up and then keep an eye on it for the next couple of days. Right, so that is the coolant system all drained, all topped up. I've topped it up slightly above max because it will find some little airlock somewhere. Um, so that's the N249 delete done in the previous video. The second air intake video has been done today. So thank you very much for watching. As always, please subscribe and I will see you in the next one.